which one of these 11 refugium lighting options puts out the most punch in par? Which one has the widest spread, the lowest mounting height, or even the lowest or highest cost per par? Today, you'll finally get to see the data that we found. We have over 50 Reef Tank Lighting Investigates videos in our light testing playlists, but not a single one is based on refugium lighting performance. So that all ends today with a sort of BRS Investigates two-parter, where in today's part one, we dive into the PAR data, spread data, cost per PAR data for these 11 different refugium lighting options. Innovative Marine Cato Max, the Neptune Grow, Kessel H80, Tunes 10K LED, the Kessel H160, AI Prime Freshwater and AI Fuge, the A360 Fuge Light, the XR15 and XR30 Freshwater Lights, and the big boy, the Kessel H1200. So to set the stage for today's testing results, here's the breakdown for how we approach this testing process. Much like we do in our reef lighting testing, the first step is to determine an optimal mounting height where less than 15% of the light is spilled outside the area you're trying to illuminate, which is in this case, your fuge. We use our standard 36 point testing grid, which is roughly a two foot by two foot area, mounted each light at six inches above the PAR meter, and then raised the light until we crossed over a 15% loss in PAR due to spillage. And yes, we are testing in air for this one since the vast majority of refugiums will have a mass of Cato that typically floats at or near the surface of the water where the most PAR will be. That's really all there is to today's test because with a mounting height determined, we'll not only be able to compare the highest to lowest mounting, but we'll also be able to see each light spread performance as well as use today's cost for each of these lights to determine an overall cost per par. With that, let's jump right into the data, starting with what we found for mounting heights. We see six light modules at eight inches, three lights at nine inches off the surface, one at 10 inches, and the one Kessel H1200 Bohemoth comes in at a whopping 25 inches. This one's actually pretty interesting of results to me because outside of that mammoth H1200, there are 10 fuge lights here that I already have confidence saying that they will work for most common installs, whether I'm space limited with my sump under the stand, or I have an open or remote sump with nearly limitless room. As for that H1200, wait till you see the next PAR results to see what job fits this tool the best. First, let's take a look at that hotspot center comparison where not surprisingly, the H1200 on the bloom setting rounds out the highest hotspot at 1465, but surprisingly, the 46 watt AI Prime Fuge also made it in the top five highest PAR output behind the H1200 and the XR30 Freshwater. On the other end of that, we see the Cato Max, Neptune Grow, and H80 with some of the softest warm spots in the center at 61, 113, and 117 respectively. Again, not surprising here since these three have some of the lowest wattage output of the entire group. Next, we wanna look at spread and answer the question, if there's a hotspot in the center, how evenly is that hotspot distributed across the two square foot area and out towards the edges? Well, for comparison, in our reef lighting tests, we found that some of the best spread performances have as little as a 20% change from the center part to the outer edges. However, here in our fuge light testing, the most even distribution we see is the H1200 from 1465 in the center to 500 in the outer ring. That means just across 16 inches from the center to the edge, there's a full 66% reduction. Now, does that mean that everything else performed even worse? I would argue that's not necessarily the case, and here's why. The sheer size and essentially four A360Xs in one H1200 housing lends itself to having the most even spread on top of the fact that it's mounted at 25 inches or 15 inches higher than the next light. Along with that, the average refugium sizes aren't likely going to be as large as a 24 by 24 inch area, so it's no surprise that these smaller form factors don't perform as strongly in the outer edges and most likely weren't even designed to be most effective in that large of an area to begin with. So with that in mind, here's that same spread data and what it looks like in just half the size at 12 inches by 12 inches. And we see that really there's no change to the order of the lights by spread, but there is absolutely a different story here with much smoother spread across a more relevant area. 
All right, now let's get into that good stuff. We have a recommended mounting height for each light. We have an idea of the par spread. Now we can use both to show a total average par across all 36 points and use that total average par along with today's cost for each light to determine what each one's cost per par is. I'm pretty sure you'll be as surprised as I was. Okay, so for total average par, we have a range from as low as 23 to as high as 769. And when we work in today's cost of each light, we see that only $2 separates the cheapest at 144 to the most costly at 345 per par. And here's the shocker for me, of the five lowest cost per par options, Two have some of the most expensive upfront sticker costs, the H1200 and XR30, while two others fall into the most economical group, the Prime Fuge and the Tunes 10K. With that information, I guess we're really left with the question of should we focus on cost per par to choose the right Fuge light, or what about spread, mounting height, or total average par? Here's how I would interpret today's data to make a more informed decision. First is Fuge size. If I have a trough or extremely large fuge, obviously the H1200 is my first choice. On the opposite end of that, if I have a fuge area of eight inches to 10 inches or less, I'm looking at those lower wattage lights like Kato Max, the Neptune Grow, the H80, or the Tunes 10K. But what if I'm in between those two extremes, which is likely the majority of you watching this, what would I focus on? Honestly, I don't think I've seen enough data yet. I still want to know the spectrum output for each one, and even beyond that, what spectrum's even right for the refugium in the first place. Also, sure, there are some lights that can push almost 1500 par, but do I really need that much? And how much does Kato need anyway? I can tell you that we're not even close to being done testing refugium lights yet. We actually plan to answer those questions and more, starting with that spectrum output question, which you should be able to see very soon right here. But in the meantime, we do have some data on which lighting technology grows Kato the best right here. Wait until you see which one quadruples the size of your Kato ball.